and welcome to this introduction to the Qualified Lawyers Transfer Scheme Assessments. During this presentation we will cover why you should become an English solicitor, the QLTS assessments themselves, why you need a course provider, and then we will cover the ultimate QLTS preparation course offered by QLTS School, and then cover in detail the multiple choice test assessments and the objective structured clinical examination and technical legal skills tests. So what is the QLTS? Well, it's the alternative route for international lawyers to qualify as solicitors in England and Wales, administered by the regulatory body for solicitors in the UK, which is the Solicitors Regulation Authority, and it replaced the previous QLTT, or Qualified Lawyers Transfer, T, uh, sorry, Qualified Lawyers Transfer Test regime in September 2010. So you may want to know the benefits of becoming an English solicitor. Uh, the qualification is highly regarded in transactions and jurisdictions throughout the world and is regarded as a qualification of distinction, of achievement and of trust. It uh, also allows English solicitors to be the driving force in business because English law is the dominant law in global transactions. So being an English solicitor will allow you to work as a solicitor in England and Wales and hold all the rights and responsibilities of that office and discharge the functions of that office which are restricted to the role of solicitors. You'll discover new career opportunities both in England and abroad, whether that's in private practice, in a consultancy role or some other uh, utility of that qualification. So you'll be able to enhance your professional profile, your reputation and your marketability in your home jurisdiction. We've spoken to many of our candidates who have now dual qualified and without any uh, exception we have found that they all have found their home jurisdictions have very much appreciated and put to use their dual qualification. You can offer a wider range of legal services to your clients and be a trusted international legal advisor able to advise on the jurisdictional elements of a transaction both in your home jurisdiction and in relation to the law as it stands in England and Wales. You can also gain a foothold in the EU market and win more business and increase your revenues. Now the QLTS assessments themselves are quite a complicated uh, set of exams and it's important that you're aware of what exactly it entails. It consists of three assessments. The first is the multiple choice test assessment which tests outcomes A1 through to A11 and it consists of 180 multiple choice test questions divided into three hour periods of morning and afternoon sessions. Now I should point out outcomes A1 to A11 are proficiencies in areas of law that the SRA expects of a newly qualified solicitor on their first day in the job. It's a very high standard, rigorous criteria are applied to candidates so it's important that you are able to demonstrate your knowledge and application of the law thoroughly in this assessment. Part two is the Objective Structured Clinical Examination or OSCE and this tests your interviewing and advocacy skills which are the practical components of the QLTS. And part three is the Technical Legal Skills Test and these test the skills of legal research, writing and drafting. Parts two and three test the skills in the context of business law, civil and criminal litigation and property and probate and these areas of law you will have covered extensively in your preparation for part one of the QLTS or the multiple choice test assessments. Now the assessment rules are very important to be aware of and to pay attention to uh, in order to save you time, money and to know where you stand based on your particular circumstances. You must perform the first part of the multiple choice test before you can attempt the OSCE and the TLST. Once you've done the MCT and successfully passed, you can attempt the OSCE and TLST in any order. Uh, as we'll cover later in the presentation, the assessment dates for the OSCE and TLST are very close together. The rules allow three attempts at each of the three parts of the assessments during the five-year period of your certificate of eligibility. 
So if you fail to pass the MCT three times, then you have to wait another five years until you can sit them again. And I'm, as I'm sure you'll appreciate, that's a long time for your personal career to take a hiatus. Exemptions can only be granted by the SRA and only in limited circumstances. And here's the big one. Candidates are not allowed to use any materials during the assessments. You can't prepare and bring in any notes. You cannot use any textbooks. It requires you to be able to remember and apply the principles of English law. Now, all the assessments are offered twice a year in the UK. Uh, the last round of multiple choice test assessments took place in January. And the next assessment is set for July 17 this year. And the Austrian TLST will be offered in autumn 2012. Dates are still to be confirmed by the QLTS assessment provider, which is Kaplan. The assessment sites at the moment are in London, and the venue is confirmed shortly, a few weeks before the assessments itself. And then in January 2013, they will also offer the multiple choice test assessments in New York. So if you're in America or thinking about moving to America, you are able to sit one head of the QLTS assessments there in January. You must obtain a certificate of eligibility to sit the assessments. We will cover what this entails and how we can help you obtain the certificate later during this webinar. A list of qualified lawyers in recognized jurisdictions is available on the SRA website. It's fair to say it covers most jurisdictions in the world. Now, lawyers from certain jurisdictions do need to satisfy the English language requirement in general, that's the IELTS or the uh, a undergraduate degree in English. Uh, if you do have any questions as to whether your particular circumstances would meet the criteria, please feel free to contact us. Now, why do you need a QLTS course provider? Well, it's a unique aspect of the QLTS assessment that only one company is providing the assessments, and that is Kaplan. Now, some of you may have heard of Kaplan, they are a law school who provide the LPC and other qualifications. And for the QLTS, they've been permitted by the SRA to administer the assessments, but in return for that, they are not allowed to provide preparation courses. So this effectively means that you have two options to sit the QLTS assessments. You can go it alone and uh, do your own preparation, or you can go with a training provider to ensure you are fully, thoroughly, and comprehensively prepared in advance. As previously stated, you are only allowed three attempts at each of the three parts of the QLTS assessment during the five-year validity of your certificate of eligibility. Now, given the fees and the timescales involved, I'm sure you'll agree it makes a lot more sense to go with a course provider rather than risk using up your allowances and then having to wait another five years if you're unsuccessful. And the MCT is a standardized test so it's not a case, as you may be familiar with in some assessments, of there being a very simple pass-fail mechanism, i.e. 49% of the fail and 51% of the pass. Each round of the MCT assessment is marked by a standard setting panel. It's convened by the SRA, consists of academics and barristers and solicitors, and they sit exactly the same assessments as you, and their scores are used to set the standard by which those MCT assessments are graded. So you actually have to excel and score a higher mark than the other candidates who sat the test together with you. As previously stated, the MCT assessments in particular test the SRA's day one outcomes. So they require the same standard of QLTS candidates as they do of domestically qualified candidates who have studied the LPC and completed a two-year training contract. It's a very high standard. It's rigorous uh, in terms of the areas covered, and you need to ensure you are fully prepared. Now, the pass rate on the MCT, we had a very good result, which I'm pleased to say. We have the statistics from the last round in July, and we're in the process of compiling the figures for the most recent round in January. But according to Kaplan, for the published results for the MCT in July, the overall pass rate was 51%. Not bad. Uh, the pass rate for those who took the course with QLTS school was 72%, I'm pleased to say, whilst for those who did not take the course, it was only 37%. So what does this mean? 
it means that taking QLTS School's MCT course dramatically improves your prospects of succeeding in the MCT assessment by up to 49%. That's a huge margin and a fantastic advantage to ensure that you are well on your way to dual qualification. So that's illustrated in the graph here and hopefully that will give you some confidence that QLTS School not only has the materials and the support and the tuition in place, but we also have the track record of success to demonstrate that those who take the preparation course with QLTS School stand a much better chance of passing the QLTS assessment. So the ultimate preparation course is offered by QLTS School to help candidates, whether you're based in England or whether you're based anywhere else in the world, to fully and comprehensively prepare for each head of the QLTS assessment in a way that is able to accommodate your circumstances. Whether you're working full-time, part-time, whether you have internet access at home or at work, and depending on what your time commitments are, our courses are flexible so that whatever your time commitments, you can put together a study plan that works for you. And the fact that you're not based in the UK is by no means a disadvantage for any aspect of the QLTS assessment. Our tutors and administrative staff are fully informed, having attended a seminar held by the SRA in London, and we're in constant and regular contact with both Kaplan and the SRA to ensure we are fully kept apprised of any developments in the assessments. The course reflects the SRA's day one outcomes and the examiner's requirements. For those of you who may be familiar with the legal practice course, which is a vocational qualification undertaken by domestic UK candidates who wish to qualify, the QLTS is a higher standard. It expects QLTS candidates to have not necessarily completed the equivalent of a two-year training contract. So the SRA requires a higher standard of those who are sitting the QLTS assessments compared to those who are preparing to sit the LPC assessments. So what that means is QLTS School has designed its content from scratch in the textbooks, in the assessment materials, in the mock tests, to ensure that it meets this higher standard that the SRA expects. So we've risen to the challenge. Uh, we have comprehensive and professional written textbooks, a web-based program, which I will show you in a moment, tutor support, and face-to-face -face revision sessions in London. But don't worry if you're not in London. As I said before, the flexible nature of the QLTS course means that wherever you are, you can take advantage of both the online and offline study options available. So why should you study with QLTS School? Well, we only focus on one test. Unlike other providers who provide a multitude of assessment options for different courses, all we do is the QLTS. We live it, we breathe it. We are the premier leader in this field, and we plan to continue to be so in the long run. All our staff, all our efforts, all our resources, all our investments go into nothing but the QLTS. As a result of that, we have the experience. We have the tutor support, we have the management support, and the administrative staff who know exactly what the QLTS requires, how it's changed since its inception, and more importantly for you, uh, what exactly your requirements are. We've dealt with people from senior partners through to paralegals, to people who have never even set foot in a UK law firm. And we've worked with them, we understand their needs, we find solutions to their circumstances, and we provide the advice so that you can decide when and how you want to prepare to sit the assessments. And we offer dedicated support. We don't just give you the course materials and leave you to it. We provide constant ongoing support, both in relation to the preparation course and the ancillary matters language requirements, the certificates of eligibility, and uh, we also give information on any other aspects you may require assistance with. And we're professional. We have heavily invested in our course material, and we act fast to adjust ourselves to changes. Uh, it's no secret to say we are constantly updating our materials after each round of assessments to ensure that we are up to date with both the changes in the law and with the changes in the QLTS assessments. So your textbooks are up to date, we email out any additional supplements or changes, and we keep you fully informed of everything you need to know so that you don't have to worry about any additional research or reading on your part beyond the materials that we provide. So why should you study with us? 
where we give you value for money. We consider that our course fees, which are all inclusive and do not contain any hidden extras, are very attractive compared to what is offered by other providers. Our courses can be delivered anytime, anywhere in the world, and in a way that is most convenient to both law firms and their candidates. For those of you who work full-time, we appreciate that your time is limited and that you may have demands on your time outside of work. So the QLTS school course materials allow you to sit down, prepare your own timetable, and then fit in your study and the materials with your life. And we are the only provider that ran pilot assessments during the initial rounds of the QLTS. Uh, we had candidates who took a chance during those times and uh, that chance paid off and they're now enjoying the benefits of being dual qualified solicitors. Uh, some of the other providers haven't yet offered MC, uh, sorry, QLTS courses. Some are looking to test the water and some may not be entering into the market at all. Uh, we, however, have been there from the very moment the assessments were announced. Uh, we're in there with the SRA and Kaplan to ensure that we provide the best possible training to anyone who wishes to take advantage of the opportunities that the QLTS can offer. So we'll start first on the MCT course. Now the MCT, to use an analogy of a driving test, is the theory aspect. This is your knowledge of English law as it stands at the moment and your ability to apply it to particular circumstances. And to extend that analogy, the subsequent parts of the QLTS, such as the OSCE and TLST, are like the practical assessments. When you go out with a driving instructor and he tests your knowledge of how to, sorry, he tests your ability of how to handle the car on the road. So where the MCT is the theory and the OSCE and TLST are the practical assessments, you certainly wouldn't try and sit your driving theory test and your practical assessments without having studied beforehand. And the same applies with QLTS assessment. So the picture you'll see on your screen now are the textbooks, which we will courier out to your location and which is your starting block for building your understanding and preparation for the multiple choice test assessments. Now the MCT course is a comprehensive package and we include the textbooks covering all areas of the practice requirements. We give you a QLTS course handbook which gives you in a neat little bundle all the information you need to know about the administration and running of the QLTS. We cover the assessments, we cover the marking criteria, we cover appeals should that be necessary and we ensure that you are fully aware of exactly how the course is structured and in that way you can know what is being asked of you. As you'll see later in this presentation there are some aspects of the QLTS which are assessed very differently to the normal undergraduate or other forms of learning that you're used to. You'll also receive revision notes summarizing the key points and main legal principles. Plenty of bullet points, plenty of tables, it's succinct presentations of the key topics so that you don't need to spend a lot of time making your own notes or highlighting up or tabbing up the, uh, the, the textbooks. We also offer an online MCT portal with more than 1,000 multiple choice questions across all of the subject areas. And we also have 15 mock exams similar to the formal MCTs. Now these are the closest you will get to actually sitting down in London or in the US in January and attempting the MCTs yourself and we'll show you that very shortly. The flexibility of the MCT course means you can study whenever and wherever you want. We deliver the textbooks out to your choice of location and you can access the MCT portals with any computer with internet access. There's also networking opportunities with other candidates through our LinkedIn and Facebook groups. Our LinkedIn group in particular has regular posts advertising meetups and you can then join in whether it's in London or elsewhere. So I'm now going to show you the MCT portal. And uh, this is accessible on the internet and you'll see on the right hand side that uh, any news in terms of new content or revision notes is posted. Any revision notes are also emailed out to you so you have a copy in your inbox. So this portal covers all outcomes, outcomes A1 all the way through to A11 and then any updates to the MCT are published periodic, periodically at the bottom. So I'm just going to show you how the system works. Bear with me a moment. 
We'll show you some sample MCT questions on the slide, but I want to demonstrate to you the mock tests. Now, the mock tests offer two forms of feedback. You can have feedback on completion, which means that you will click through all 90 questions and you won't get the answers until you've completed all 90. And this simulates the actual MCT assessments themselves. Feedback from candidates who successfully passed the MCTs is that these mock exams were a great help because they were able to read through the textbook, comprehend their knowledge of the topics, and then attempt the multiple choice test questions online to identify where their knowledge was accurate and where they needed to work on it. It provides very important feedback which allows you to hone your study and focus on those areas which need extra work. So I'm just loading up this, uh, this portal now. Uh, it's not normally this slow, I've just got a very slow computer. Okay, so it's loaded up on my screen and it's just about to load up on yours. And what we'll see here, on the top right is a timer counting down from three hours. Because when you sit the assessments, you'll have 90 questions and three hours to complete. And then in the afternoon, you have another 90 questions and three hours to complete. So this is question one of 90. We have the question stem, and then you have five options. Uh, this question is a contract question. It regards a stopple. It's been a long time since I've done contracts, so I'm just going to choose an out. I don't know whether that answer is right or wrong, and we won't know because it's gone straight through to the next question. So you go through all 90 questions, and then you receive your feedback. So I'm now going to take you to some sample questions so you can see just what is required of candidates when it comes to the multiple choice test assessments. So what we see here is the sample question on competition law. Uh, EU competition law is one of the outcomes which forms part of EU law and a thorough understanding of all aspects of EU law is required from competition law through to human rights, uh, the role of the various bodies, the structure of the European legal system and so on. So this is one which requires you to know the burden of proof and what the parties are required to prove. So I won't read the question, but I'll just leave it up there for a few seconds so you can read it and digest it. And I've chosen these questions to give an example of how important it is to be able to have comprehensive and reliable preparation material. So the answer to this question was answer B. I'm just about to bring up on your screen, bear with me. Sorry, answer C even. So we've got a detailed explanation here of why that answer is correct. And that requires you to read through the textbook to understand your knowledge of both the law and the sources of the law, whether it's rule, a constitution, statute, a treaty article, or a case. And then you'll have multiple choice test options and answers. So this is another sample question, and this one comes from professional conduct, and it's to do with a particularly hot topic in the legal market at the moment, which is alternative business structures. Uh, these are basically opportunities for law firms to reconfigure their constitution to attract, for example, outside investment or to undertake uh, different types of services. So this one requires you to consider how best to structure your firm in order to include European and foreign lawyers and to operate globally, as well as not having corporate governance requirements and to ensure that partners retain joint and several liability. So you, once again, you have five options. And again, it's important that you're fully aware of not only what the answer is, but why that answer is the correct answer. So the correct answer to that sample question is D. And what we've done here is ex explaining why it's a correct answer, but also why the other answers are incorrect. And again, if you try and prepare your own materials or prepare your own study guide for the uh, QLTS assessments, it's fair to say you will struggle simply because it's a very comprehensive uh, syllabus. It goes into a lot of detail and drills down on some particularly discrete areas of law which if you're preparing your own materials, you may not necessarily have the resources or the knowledge to be able to uh, prepare for it, especially if you're from an area where English law is not uh, the 
former jurisdiction or the current jurisdiction, such as a, a civil law area where everything is codified. So now we'll cover the OSCE and TLST course. Now, this is quite different for most people because if you're used to studying at undergraduate level or in college, uh, you're used to formal examinations or maybe the odd oral examination uh, if you're studying for language, for example. But the OSCE and TLST are very different. They aim to test a higher level of knowledge, understanding and ability to accurately advise clients in three areas using a variety of skills. So whereas in the multiple choice test assessments, you are testing your knowledge and application of the law, the OSCE and TLST builds on your knowledge of the law and your ability to expound it, to advise clients, to present arguments on points of law and to draft materials in relation to that area of law. So you're tested in interviewing, advocacy, writing, drafting and online legal research. And it's a unique way of assessments. They employ actors to play clients or to play the opposition or to play judges. You'll have access to key legal databases such as LexisNexis and Westlaw. And you'll have a limited amount of time in which to draft a legal letter or a research piece. So you should be able to know and understand the relevant legal principles which you will have developed from the NCT and be able to explain to that to the client using accurate and timely advice, which documents to use and to draft various documents yourself when needed. Now here is where it becomes a level playing field because you will sometimes have senior partners with extensive practice experience and sometimes you'll have paralegals or people who haven't set foot in the law firm. But that doesn't matter because what the SRA is looking for is for you to meet their criteria of competence and ability. So it doesn't matter whether you've been in practice a long time or never been in practice at all. We are able to work with you, whatever your experience level, to ensure you meet the SRA's requirements and standards. So the course is designed to bridge the gap between your academic study and your practical skills. Again, the analogy of the driving test, you do your theory, then this is you getting in the car and showing the instructor that you know the rules of the road and that you can handle the vehicle. So because everyone has unique skills and experiences and different levels of expertise and experience in the legal industry, there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all approach to the OSCE and TLST. So what QLTS School does is personalize the preparation course. We have an expert tutor that is your point of contact and we guide you through from day one through a customized program for your particular needs and goals. So our tutors are, you're in good hands, they're qualified solicitors and barristers, senior university law lecturers, as well as external examiners on the LPC. So what do you get for the OSCE and TLST? Well, we combine the course. We're not going to charge you uh, two separate prices for two separate elements. It's all in one. So you'll have an initial interview for each candidate with one of our senior tutors. This is crucial because she will assess your experience, your areas you need to uh, focus on, your timeline, your circumstances, whether you're working full-time, whether you're working part-time, uh, what times you're available, and what level of tuition is required. And then they'll put together a personalized plan and then you will liaise with that tutor, whether it's by telephone, by Skype, by video conferencing, whatever method is best for your circumstances and indeed times, we will be able to accommodate you. You'll have direct contact with experienced tutors, and this again is the advantage of going with a course provider rather than trying to prepare for the assessments yourself. It's that face-to-face -face contact with a trained, qualified, experienced tutor, which you simply won't get if you try and do it on your own. You'll also receive a copy of the QLTS course guide so that you're able to familiarize yourself with precisely what is being asked of you in respect of the OSCE and the TLST. And this is the crucial part. You receive exam type practice questions with answer guides for self-assessment. Now this applies particularly to the technical legal skills test. So these exam type practice questions will cover some legal drafting, some legal research, and perhaps a piece of written advice to a client. And you'll then be able to check your efforts against the answer guides and work out which areas you need to focus on and which areas you're doing well in. We also re you receive free periodic updates for the course materials as for law and as for course requirements change. And uh, the jewel in the crown, as it were, is five mock exams in each of the five heads of assessments with one-to-one -one tutor feedback 
based on the SRA marketing criteria. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what can seal it. You will have the opportunity to have a sample assessment live with a tutor, just you and the tutor, and receive personalized individual feedback from tutors who have coached many candidates, who have a very good success rate, and who know exactly what the SRA are looking for when they're assessing you. And you'll also receive a response to any general academic inquiries in addition to these tutor feedback and mock tests. So the Oskian TLST course is a unique solution to a unique assessment uh, situation. And uh, you'll be hard pushed to be able to prepare as thoroughly and comprehensively if you try and use alternative methods of study. Because it's not a closed book examination, because it's not testing your knowledge of the law, but rather your application, it requires a different approach to studying and preparation. You'll also have networking opportunities with other examinees and online peer review during practice assessments. So in addition to the personalized one-on-one -on -one support, you'll have the chance to meet up with your fellow candidates, whether it's in the UK or abroad or online, and you can practice against each other. You can take that tutor feedback, you can build on it, and then you can receive additional feedback from your peers to ensure that you are as finely honed in your legal writing and advocacy and advising skills as you can be. So how much does this all cost? Well, there's several packages offered for the MCT. The delivery of the course materials, that were the textbooks we showed you before, is free within the UK, £40 to Europe, and £90 to other destinations. The MCT course itself, the standard package, which gives you 12 months access to the MCT portal, costs £790. In addition, if you require tutor support, then you will find that the additional option of £100, costing £890, will be of benefit. And this will be particularly useful for candidates from civil law jurisdictions who may not necessarily be familiar with the English common law system, uh, particularly those who deal with solicitors' accounts and haven't come across accounts for the first time. Uh, I know that they have taken advantage of this option and found the additional clarification to be very beneficial. And the Oskian TLST course, as previously described, is a combined course and the fees are £1,350 plus the costs of the textbooks, which is approximately 160 Now, I should mention in respect to the textbooks, they are from Oxford University Press. They are of a very high standard, and we have an exclusive discount through a partnership arrangement with Oxford University Press so that you receive a discount off the retail price of those books. Now, the reason we use the LPC textbooks for the OSCE and TLST course is because we have found that they are very well written, they adequately cover the required elements of the OSCE and TLST, but we also offer the ability to build on those skills through tutor feedback, which you will get with the OSCE and TLST packages. So that pretty much covers it. Um, if you have any questions, then please feel free to contact us on those contact details, send us an email, or check out our website. Now, the next assessments are in July. If you want to prepare now, then it is certainly feasible to be able to sit those exams. But you need to start preparing now. You need to have the self-discipline and the knowledge of your limits and circumstances to be able to, uh, to, to sit that and to prepare for yourself confidently and with enough time to sit the assessment adequately. I'm just going through a couple of your questions and assigning them to people who are in a good position to ask. Bear with me a moment. And we have had candidates in the past who have sat the QLTS assessments with very little time to spare and have managed to pass successfully. So if you're umming and ahhing or not quite sure and want to take the assessments and not sure if July is enough time, if you feel you can do it, it can be done and it has been done in the past and uh, you need to make a decision based on your own circumstances. I'm just going to launch a quick poll whilst I look through your questions. So I just to ask saying people are looking to take the MCT. So we've got the next round of assessments in July 2012. A date in 2013, it will be January in the US, and uh, another date to be confirmed in the UK. And uh, so you can either choose 2013, July, or not yet decided. So if you could click on one of those options, please. 
And the dates in 2013 are January in New York and dates to be confirmed by Kaplan. Kaplan publishes the dates on their website at kaplanqlts.com. That's K-A-P-L-A-N-Q-L-T-S dot com. So we've got most people voted and we have some who want to do it in July, whilst we have some who are looking to do it in 2013. What I will say is, without prejudging what Kaplan's dates are going to be, the dates are usually every six months, in which case the next round of assessments will be around January 2013 for the UK as well. So if you are looking to sit the assessments in 2013, I would also consider starting to prepare now. That way it gives you enough time to prepare, whether you're working full-time or working part-time, and you can ensure you give yourself enough time to build up your confidence, to test your understanding, and if necessary, to seek clarification, either through the tutor support or through your peers using the uh, networking options available. I'm just going through a couple more of your questions. Okay, if you're working full-time and considering sitting the assessments in July, again, it has been done in the past. It's entirely based on your personal circumstances. Uh, we're not in the business of saying or pressuring people to do it. You need to look at what your time commitments are. We do have a webinar on our YouTube channel for QLTS School in which I interviewed our senior tutor, Sarah Freeman, and she gives some fantastic advice on timings and a good way to get into a routine and discipline of studying and how to decide whether you've got enough time to be able to sit the assessments. Just going through some more questions. If you've been granted an exemption from the MCT, then it won't affect your chances of passing the OSCIN TLFT in autumn. The only thing that will affect your chances is your preparation. Uh, the autumn dates haven't been confirmed yet, but again, if you start preparing now, then you put yourself in a very good position because you receive that intensive tutor feedback and support, the opportunities for peer review, and in that way you'll be able to decide whether or not you want to sit them in the autumn. OSCE and TLST, which month? The months do vary, as I say, they're on a rotation. We don't know, and uh, all I can say at this stage is that it will be in the autumn. The pass marks for the previous MCT exams, the previous MCT exams before July were generally the pilot rounds, uh, so they were quite experimental, and it wouldn't be fair to use those as a yardstick to measure uh, MCT exam results. Uh, we're still collating the figures for the January exams, and we'll be able to post those shortly. Uh, student visa applications, that will be something we probably need to respond to on an individual basis. Can we help candidates to apply for visa assessments? Again, I'm referring that to our administrative team to see whether we're in a position to do so. Uh, if you do have any more questions, please do feel free to email us at info at qlts.co.uk. If you're ready to start preparing whether you want to sit the MCT assessments in July this year, or if you want to start for a possible date of January 2013, then go to qlts.co.uk, sign up and uh, start preparing to advance your career and become an English qualified solicitor. Uh, I am one, and it's uh, very beneficial, hard work, but well worth it. You pick up some fantastic skills, it's a well-regarded qualification, and you can help drive business in both the UK and around the globe at a very exciting time. So thank you very much indeed for your attention tonight and for listening to this presentation. I do hope it gives you uh, more information and the, uh, the enthusiasm to prepare for the QLTS assessments. Uh, any more questions, please do feel free to contact us. And uh, in the meantime, enjoy your evening. Thank you.